On the 22nd day of November 1963, John F. Kennedy was shot in Dallas, Texas. But how did he start his political career right here in our city? Find out now on this episode of Astonishing Glasgow. This would be much more fun if I had my bike with me. Jeez. Today's, or should that be tonight's episode as it's all in darkness, starts right here at Glasgow Central Station. I'm fairly sure that with 38 million people passing through the station every year, almost every person watching this video will have walked across this concourse at some point. Some of the more famous visitors include Roy Rogers, who stayed in the Central Hotel in 1953 and famously led his horse Trigger up the main staircase. And then there was John Logie Baird, who as well as being regarded as the inventor of the television, he could also kind of be considered as the inventor of YouTube. In 1927, Baird sent a television picture all the way to the Glasgow Central Hotel from London, 438 miles away, and he sent it via the phone lines. Luckily he didn't have to put up with adverts for VPN suppliers or gambling companies, or it might not have gone any further. Now the visitors to the station that this video is about is potentially more famous than the others put together, but that wasn't the case when he first arrived here. It was the 7th of September 1939, when John Fitzgerald Kennedy arrived at Glasgow Central Station. He had flown to Presswick Airport before getting on a train to Glasgow Central where he was welcomed by the then Lord Provost Patrick Dolan. He was here to visit around 150 survivors of the SS Athenia. The SS Athenia was launched on the 28th of January 1922, right here at the Fairfield Shipyard in Govan. She was launched for the Anchor Donaldson Line and sailed a route between the UK and Canada. On September the 1st, 1939, two days before war was declared on Germany, the Athenia set sail from Glasgow. She docked briefly in Liverpool, and on the 2nd of September, at 1 o'clock, she departed for Montreal in Canada. There were around 1,103 passengers on board, and 315 crew. The passengers were made up of around 500 Jewish refugees, 469 Canadians and 311 US citizens. On the evening of the 3rd of September, the Athenia was 370 kilometres northwest of Ireland when she was spotted by Uber Lieutenant Fritz Julius Lemp in the German submarine U-30. At 7.40 that night, U-30 fired two torpedoes, thinking the Athenia may be a troop ship with one of the torpedoes making a direct hit, exploding on Athenia's port side and destroying her engine room. She managed to stay afloat for 14 hours, and her distress signal was answered by several ships from the Royal Navy, as well as a Norwegian cargo ship, a United States cargo ship and a Swedish yacht. In the tragedy, 98 passengers and 19 crew members lost their lives including a 10-year-old Canadian girl called Margaret Hayworth. She was one of the first Canadians killed by enemy action in the war. The survivors returned to land at Greenock and were taken by train to Glasgow, arriving here at Central Station. A disaster fund was set up by Lord Provost Dolan and he sent a letter to the then US Ambassador Joseph Kennedy inviting him to travel to Glasgow. But given the events, Joseph Kennedy was unable to leave his post in London, so he sent his son, a fresh-faced 22-year-old John F. Kennedy. The Lord Provost and JFK set about visiting the survivors, and at the Beresford Hotel on Sucky Hall Street, John F. Kennedy made a speech on behalf of his father. In his speech he had said, I have never seen people more grateful for all that has been done for them 
by the people of Glasgow. So right here in the Beresford Hotel in Glasgow is the very first place where John F. Kennedy acted on behalf of the people of the United States of America. This was the first step towards becoming the 35th President of the USA. I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear that you will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. When he returned to London, he sent a letter of thanks to the Provost Dolan for the gift of two books of the city. He also stated his intention to visit Glasgow in the future, but sadly, he never had the chance to return. A few months later, a letter was received from President Franklin Roosevelt which said, I wish you to know how deeply I and the American people appreciate the efficient generous and humane manner in which Glasgow and its citizens came to the help of our fellow countrymen and women in their need. I assure you that Glasgow's gesture will not be forgotten. A short episode this time, but as of the making of this video it is 60 years since John F. Kennedy's assassination and it is astonishing to think that his career started right here in our very city. If you enjoyed this episode of Astonishing Glasgow, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that super thanks button to make a donation and help me tell more of Glasgow's astonishing stories. These are the names of the superstars who donated after the last episode. If you want to get in touch, use the comment section or join my social media pages, all the links are in the description below. Thank you very much for watching this nighttime edition, and I will see you next time in Astonishing Glasgow. Right, I'm away for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a Dr Pepper on the side. Yeehaw! I wonder if people will like this episode or will it be a total bomb? Hmm.